In my Step 3364 Crocodile Review, I talk about what the Lonesome Crocodile Pack DLC truck can do, and whether it is worth the money. Apologies to any French viewers in advance, for the title of my Step 3364 Crocodile Review will have a very different meaning. But then this would not be a tribe called Cars if I did not bring out the big puns. So here we are, the Step 3364 Crocodile, a compact off-road truck based on the ZIL-1 something something that should offer plenty of bite, not beat. And it does! Even with the basic engine, it is the smallest truck capable of pulling a high saddle trailer. Not that it is the best at doing so when fully laden, but it can do surprisingly well. Though I would stick to smaller trailers for best results. It also sounds better than most trucks, thanks to one of the better engine notes. And I would argue it is one of the most interesting to look at, with that barn find retro styling reminding us of simpler times. Just do not expect a DVD head unit, Apple CarPlay and dual zone climate control. Luxuries in this Russian runner include instructions on the dashboard, a basic radio and uh, rust. Lots of delicious rust. Not that you buy a Soviet Union truck for extravagance and style, in the same way you would not buy a pet crocodile for cuddles and affection. So when would you use the Step 3364 Crocodile? Well, being small makes it good for scouting, and on the small scale, this is one of the smallest, although the turning circle is not the best. Power steering who? Unlike many smaller trucks, however, the Step 3364 has pretty big sharp teeth, where torque, grip and stability are concerned. As a result, it is mostly pleasing to drive, until hellishly deep snow and mud bring it to a halt. Even with the 900 litre fuel tank add-on, I found the 3364 stays upright despite some questionable and overly enthusiastic driving. You could, and maybe should, use it for emergency refueling and repairs, especially with that roof add-on. The van body, meanwhile, has 500 repair points, two spare tyres, and 60 litres of fuel, while the sideboard bed fits one slot of cargo for smaller logistical operations, or a quadruped. Best of all, each of these three add-ons has a unique design specific to this truck. The Step 3364's power to weight rating starts at S, but you can make it S plus with any of the three optional engines. You can also choose from balance, fine tune off-road and high range gearboxes, which is good news for crawlers and speed demons alike. Active suspension is sadly not a thing like on some of its rivals, not that I mind, as I usually roll with raised and that is a thing. Do so and 42 inch tyres become available 3 inches larger than the default. Size is, after all, everything in SnowRunner and maybe real life. UOD2 or TMHS1 Tega Balloon tyres get my vote, but some of you ice dwellers may prefer chains. The 3364 even has highway rubbers if you are the sort of person whose idea of a quiet life is wrestling with alligators while naked and dressed up as a steak. Unfortunately, if the sky and ground swap temporarily, you will soon remember that the Step 3364 has no autonomous winch option. You have to make do with the stock extended, advanced and high powered medium alternatives. This is perhaps the biggest problem. It is possible to scout with larger vehicles, such as the Tega 6436, with all the added benefits of larger wheels, larger engine outputs, fuel capacity, superior utility, and speed. Even some trucks in its class are more useful, more potent, or both. The TUZ-108 Warthog Wathog has bigger tyres and taller suspension, while the TUZ-16 Actaeon has more add-ons, bigger tyres, and the autonomous medium winch. The Ford F750 Scout, meanwhile, is not that far off either in terms of potency, utility, and it gets a smaller autonomous winch. Even a Zix 5368 can make greater sense as it has many more add-ons, including the ability to haul logs and larger cargo loads, as well as bigger wheels and, thanks to an update, Tega balloons. 
As for its sibling, the Step 310E, it is faster, capable of a wider range of rolls, and has 220 litres of fuel capacity compared with 150. While the similar size Chevrolet Kodiak C70 has more utility and both saddle heights, although both these options have wheels around the same size. The Step 3364 Crocodile then occupies a niche role in that it can haul high saddle trailers, although not brilliantly, or it can be used for support and scouting, which it does well except for the whole cruise ship turning circle thing. What makes the 3364 memorable is how it drives. It is slightly slow and predictable, which fits with its retro vibe, and it has proper suspension. Random damage seems less common too, which enhances that pleasant driving experience. It feels like the devs made the effort. Other things to note? Well, despite the fact it looks like the spare tyre option gets in the way, it actually tucks under all the add-ons nicely. Not that punctures are much of a thing in SnowRunner, but the one time you do not bother is the one time you end up needing it. For returning home to the water, the 3364 Crocodile has two snorkels, one of which is significantly better than the other, but neither sits as high as on other trucks around the same size. You can mess around with a few aesthetic parts, such as a round central beacon. The two alternative fog lights look too contemporary, while the front bumpers range from subtle to ultimate zombie apocalypse destruction protection, TM. Depending on how much of your view you want obscured by deadly planet-consuming fumes, you can go for a chunky muzzle or the symmetrical snub heat shield. To be honest, I know a lot of people dislike the idea of a paid DLC, especially when there is a year one and year two pass, and also that you only get one truck, whereas the Jeep Jewel Pack and forthcoming Land Rover set gives you two. But then this is a useful truck that avoids treading on the toes of non-paid alternatives too much. Which begs the question, should DLC trucks be a bit rubbish so no one is affected and misses out? Or should they be superior to reward those who pay? I can see merit on both sides, but the point of this video was to show you whether the Step 3364 Crocodile is worth the money. And the answer is... sort of. There is no real need to buy it, but if you do, it can provide quite big entertainment for quite a small amount of money. And that is it for this video. Should I do a roundup of all the similar sized trucks or actually finish the heavy truck showdown? Let me know. Like, subscribe, and maybe even donate via the links in the description. Take care, homescones.